uh, one year on, uh, we saw the collapse of, just like what uh, Mr. Mohan Samaranaga said, the collapse of the Sri Lankan state was witnessed in 2022. And here we go uh, one year down the line. Uh, Mr. Samaranaga, let me start off with you in this segment. Um, see, I can equate what happened in Sri Lanka with what happened in America on January 6th. Uh, when President uh, Donald Trump and his supporters didn't accept the verdict that was given uh, at that particular time with regard to their presidential election, they stormed the Capitol. And there was such a big ha -hoo all around the world saying that apparently these people were uh, mobsters, they attacked the democratic, uh, uh, democratically held institutions. There was such a big um, conversation about the fact that how how bad it was that their parliament was attacked, which is the Capitol Hill. Uh, so, but after that, this is what I want to talk about. After that, every single person from both sides, Republicans or Democrats, they said, yes, we need to have accountability process in this. We can't just be okay because next time also when there's a presidential election, you disagree, people will start screaming, shouting, and uh, behaving in a very undemocratic manner. That never happened here. We don't even see our politicians talking about or even going close to that word of accountability. But the, 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 the funny part is the people who were there at uh, the Aragalea who was protesting, one of the key words they've been saying is accountability, accountability. We had to put the Rajapaksas in uh, jail, we had to get the money back. Uh, they came with a number. Nobody could even you know, basically pronounce that number because that was so big, uh, saying that that much of money is outside that has been stolen by the Rajapaksas. But there is nothing of that sort. What is your opinion on that? You said uh, in your commentary that never happened in this country. Yes, I believe, yes. Because there is a powerful section of the society which stand with the people who were at God's face. I will, uh, I will give you an example. On 31st March 2022, a violent mob advanced towards the private residence of the leader of the state, democratically elected leader of the state. This year, when we are celebrating the first anniversary of the collapse of the state, one of the leading English papers in, in our country had a, an editorial. Its heading was Mirihana Uprising Bitrate. For this editor, it was an uprising. How can you call an uprising? An uprising is something good, something justifiable. But people advancing, trying to gate crash the president, private residence, how can you call it an uprising? So there are other very powerful forces within in this country and outside. Who, who do Sri you Lanka. think? Sorry? Who do you think? Who do you think this powerful? Because you know, when we ta talk about these kinds of subjects, the first label that they uh, put on you is you're a conspiracy theorist because uh, you, you are trying to come up with these, you know, aliens have come to the world and all that kind of nonsense kind of stories. But there is truth to that because it is not just we are forgetting this geopolitical aspect of this entire uh, issue. We don't want to talk about it because we think that apparently this is, I mean, yes, pain was there. People were really angry. They didn't get their gas. They, the lights were not, you know, uh, available. Uh, and and uh, they were told that apparently I can't bring anything, uh, uh, you know, we can't bring fuel into the country because we don't have dollars. Then people ask, where, who, who, who spent the dollars? Who took these wrong decisions? So. Anger was there, but then, like you earlier said, masterfully took it to where they wanted it to go. So who do you think is behind all this? The powerful countries. Now, Mahesh, we are living in a world which is dominated by a handful of extremely rich, powerful countries. Now there is a challenge that has emerged, especially after the collapse of the Soviet Union, to these traditional powerful countries. The challenge is that new power centers are coming up, especially led by China is number one. In 1990, China was perhaps the 10th largest economy in the world. 
Now it is the, it is number two. According to U.S. own uh, surveys and researches, by 2040, China will take the United States as the economic power. So there is a fierce rivalry between these traditional powers and the emerging power centers. That is it manifested in the so-called theory free and open Indo-Pacific strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the ultimate aim of that strategy is to contain China, rising power of China, then uh, Russia. If I, if I say something like this, China was becoming very powerful here in terms of business. They, the, the port city is the, the, the jewel of it. They were bringing, uh, you know, they were doing something new and if there was a successful port city, it would be, it, it gives the indication that we can replicate it here. Look, our projects are very successful. Uh, that was the reason. I mean, if you look at the place where the whole Aragalea started, it was right in front of the port city as well. And any, any, any pictures, if you Google right now about Port City, you will see this is right in front of a place where people can gather and basically protest. It's not only it's the financial capital and every single big businesses are around that. So is that the reason you think? Yes, yes, exactly. There is an acute, fierce rivalry between these two powers, especially the United States led uh, Western yeah. countries and the uh, People's Republic of China. So, I, this is not to justify that China does everything that China does, but this is the reality. So, now these powerful countries are getting ready to contain China, even to wage war against China using uh, Taiwan as yeah, its yeah. proxy. So, in, in the year 2023, the US major foreign policy publication, its foreign policy, they carried a 12 series, to article of 12 uh, articles. The title was Lessons for the Next War. The first one the, is the ongoing war in uh, b with Ukraine. between Ukraine and Russia, using Ukraine as the battleground. The next war will be with China, with China for which they, the powerful countries, including China, including India, they want to control this tiny, uh, tiny land. It was very clearly stated in their policy documents and think tank publications. The problem is most of our people don't read. That's the issue. 